Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rikakudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth and Shalom to the elect out there of Israel. All right, I'm again, I'm going to go in Isaiah 42 and start at verse 1. It says, Behold, my servant, who I am, who I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. All right. So that's that's what the the elect are doing, the prophets. You know how it puts his spirit on us. You know, I always bring that verse out, Jeremiah three and fifteen, where it says he's going to provide pastors who who will te- feed you with you know that are like minded with him, who are going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's what it is, and it says, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So. The Lord's elect, the prophets, they, you know, we come out and um, we're bringing forth judgment by by speaking the prophecies, because we're telling we're telling the nations what's about to happen through the Holy Spirit, and that's how. And then the judgment, it it, it comes forth, it comes to pass, All right? So Yahweh, like like I said, in a few lessons. Hey, he gives you his secrets to his servants, his mysteries to his prophets, before he does anything. As and that's mercy on these people, on the elect. Really, it's mercy on the elect because the elect will repent. Verse two: He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Right. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Right? So Yahweh Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the, the uh, enterprise of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai does not fail like it does with Esau, right? Esau Edom, he tries to bring forth um, his enterprise, but Yahweh doesn't allow it to be fulfilled. He'll maybe let him, you know, like he said, he'll, he'll let him... Uh, Put a RFID C hip in in one third of the people. I'm sorry, two thirds of the people, but not the entire nation. You know, and the heathen he'll allow that, but he's not going to allow that that RFID C hip to be put in in all the people, right? Let's see, I think it's Job twenty. Well, actually, you know what? It's Job five. I was I think I mixed them up. Let me see, Job five, twelve. This is Yahweh saying he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So that's the arrogance and the and the pride of Esau. He thinks he can he thinks he can perform his enterprise, but unless Yahweh allows him to do anything, he can't do it. All right. Now we got Isaiah. Let me go back to that because it's the opposite for for Yahweh. Isaiah forty two. Verse 4, it says, He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. All right, so Yahweh won't be discouraged like Esau will. He's going to, like Esau ate him, he's going to, the so called white man, it's going to be discouraging for him when, because when he starts to, like it says in the scripture, when his belly starts to be full, when he starts eating, when he starts to be full, Yahweh is going to put an end to his enterprise, right? Let me grab that real quick. That's in Job 20. Job 20 and 23 says, he's talking about the wicked, right? Well, let's read this. I'll start at... I'll start at 22. It's talking about the wicked, the Esau Edom. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Right? 
In the straits means problems. You got issues. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Right? And he, it's actually talking about those missiles. Because those missiles are going to come down on his own head. All right? Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, even though they, they give um, the Esau Edom the technology to, to create the missiles, well, those missiles are going to be his own destruction. Right? Those are going to be, that's why it says, the wrath of Yahweh is going to uh, rain on him, all right, while he's eating. Meaning while he's trying to fulfill his enterprise, trying to put our RFID C hip in everybody, you know, Yahweh is going to shorten the days for the elect's sake, like it tells you in uh, Matthew 24. And then he's going to he's going to put that, that World War III, this, he's going to put the spirit on, on the nations to start sending missiles and burn the whore. Right in the middle of his enterprise, right? Isaiah 42, and, uh, and that's him bringing forth judgment. Yahweh bringing forth judgment. 42 and 5, it says, <clears throat> Thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, that he created the heavens and stretched them out. He spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the spirit to them that walk therein. Right, so the spirit. Who does he give his spirit to? He says his elect. He said, "I shall put my spirit upon him." Right, so the he's putting his spirit on on his elect. You know, and, and that's that's why we we're doing the lessons. That's why, you know, that's why the uh, one third is going to repent and come back to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai because he's going to put his spirit on on the elect. Started out with his prophets, obviously. All right, verse 6. I, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. And it's talking about the Gentiles of Israel, okay? The, the prophets are a light for the Gentiles of Israel. And that's how you know because the Gentiles of the, of the heathen nations, they're, we're not a light to them, right? Well, we are a light to everybody, but, but you know, this is an offense to the other Gentiles. The ones he's going to keep and he's going to hold our hand are the elect of, of the, uh, or I'm sorry, are the Gentiles of Israel, not of the heathen nations, okay? Verse 7, to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Right. And the, the prison house is, is, is Babylon. Right. Just like in the, um, Paul's time. It was Rome was the prison. You know. Because the Israelites. You have to understand. We're, we're un, under captivity. Slavery. Which slavery in a prison is, is likened to each other. You know. You're not free like you think. Um, let me grab this real quick. Zechariah nine and twelve. It says, "Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee." Right. So the, the Israelites are the prisoners of hope, and more so the elect. Because the elect are the ones who have hope, right? We're going to get delivered out of the prison. We're going to receive salvation. But the two-thirds, they're not, they're not in that mindset. They're not thinking about the deliverance. They want to stay in, in captivity. They want to stay in the prison, you see? But there's you have the the elect who have the mindset where we're going to get out of this place, you know we're going to be delivered. We're going to have received salvation, all right, and that's why we are called prisoners of hope. Isaiah forty two and verse eight. I am Yahweh. That is my name. See. It says, that's my name. 
in my glory. Because if you just say Lord, that's not his name. That's the title. But anyway, let me keep reading. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Hey, Yahweh is saying, hey, I got, my name is Yahweh. He's saying, uh, he's not, his glory, he's not going to give it to another, another uh, so-called God. And my other phone had a chime on that, you see. He's not going to give uh, the J word man, JC. He's not going to give, Yahweh's not, Yahweh Bashim is not going to give the glory to to uh, Jesus Christ. That's a graven image, a false idol. All right? He's not going to give his glory to Allah, which that just that word just means power. He's not going to give his glory to um um what's that a uh, Hindu god? <clears throat> I forgot the name of the Hindu god, Krishna. And actually Hindus got a lot of gods. <laughs> Shiva I just pulled it up. Shiva, Brahma, Ganesha, Vishnu, Hindu deities, right? Those those false pagan gods, none of those gods are going to get glory. Yahweh is not going to give them any glory. He's not going to give his glory to these, these false gods. All right? Verse 9. Behold. Oh, shit. It's a... It's a lot here. On acting up again. All right, so like yeah, there we go. Verse oh, shit, it keeps freezing. Verse, forgive me, so like yeah, the screen is freezing, but I'm gonna keep reading in the scripture because I have my Bible right here. Isaiah 42 and and uh. Shit. Isaiah 42 and let me close it and open it again. All right. Isaiah 42 and I'm at verse 9. It says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Right. And how does he tell us of them? By, by the understanding the scripture. And giving his secrets to his prophets. So before he does things, he gives his he gives his word to his prophets, and and you know we come out and we blow the trumpet. And that's all generations, all ages of prophets doing the same thing, receiving the word, receiving the spirit that Yahweh puts on his elect, and then to go out and teach. Verse ten. Sing unto Yahweh a new song and, and his praise from the end of the earth that ye go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Right, so, you know, we the new song is this truth. Because remember, we were born in captivity, brought up in these pagan churches. You know, some of us were Catholics, some of us were uh, Muslims, some of us were uh, Baptists, some of us were Jehovah's Witnesses. And those aren't those aren't teaching truth, so that's why it's considered a new song because this is a new song in our mouth. It's an ancient song, but we had to come into remembrance of the new song. We had to we had to remember the lyrics, so to speak. You see, verse eleven: Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice; the villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Right, in the wilderness is wherever we've been, the Israelites, where we weren't keeping our laws. Because when we don't keep our own laws that, that Yahweh gave us, then we're, because we're like beasts in the wilderness. Okay? And, and now we're seeing, seeing him. He's, he's commanding us, hey, once you have the new song, go to the top of the mountains, meaning all these different governments, and, and shout, from, shout this new song out from the top of the governments. Meaning all over the world. That's what that's what the prophets are doing. Because we're scattered in every nation. So meaning every government, every mountain. So here we are now, you know, teaching the uh, teaching the new song. And the elect are gonna hear the new song and repent. 
right? Let me see. Uh, what was I going to go? Let me go to 19, Psalms 19 real quick. Because we're supposed to, you know, shout from the mountaintops, right? All over, all over the, everywhere. So Psalm 19, it says, verse 3, There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he had set a tabernacle for the sun. All right, so you have the prophets all over the earth who are scattered all over the earth, speaking in all these different languages, but we're all on singing the same song, even though the languages could be different, right? But, this, but the song is the same, you know? It's like sometimes they'll take a song, you know, an artist, and they'll sing it in a, you know, it's an English song, and they'll, someone will make it in Spanish, you know? <laughs> It's the same thing. We're all on one accord, you know. Even though maybe it's a different tongue, you hear you hear it in Spanish, you hear it in English, you hear it in an African, so-called African dialect. You hear, you know what I mean? The song is the same though, and that's what the prophets are doing on it, shouting it on all the mountaintops. Isaiah forty-two and twelve. It says, "Let them give glory unto Yahweh and declare His praise in the islands." Yeah, because this, this song is going to be, give, this is how we're giving Yahweh glory by d singing his song. And it's all over. You know, it's not limited to, to just one place. It's in the mountaintops of every of every government. It's in the islands. It goes throughout the, like it says, De Deuteronomy uh, 32 and 2, my doctrine shall drop like the rain. Right? It's going to touch everywhere. Everywhere it rains, it's going to touch everywhere. This doctrine is going to be sung and shouted out. Everywhere. Verse 13. Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yeah, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Right. And because we're singing this song everywhere, you know, the enemies become in fear. Verse 14. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman, I will destroy and devour at once. Right, so he's he's held his peace. He's let he's let these heathen nations rule over us. But now he's about we're coming into the time where he's not gonna hold his peace anymore. He's not gonna be still anymore. Right? Verse 15. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs, and I will make the rivers islands and will dry up the pools. So yeah, that's going into the destruction that we're, we're, we're about to witness, right? The mountains and hills. Mountains are those large governments. The hills are those smaller nations, the smaller governments. He's going to make waste of, first and foremost, he's going to make waste of the, the, the uh, government of Babylon, America. But Yahweh Bashem Yahshai is going to, when, when, you know, the spirit visit the earth and when Yahweh Shai comes back on those clouds he's going to make war with the mountains and the hills meaning the other nations verse 16 and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not I will lead them in paths that they have not known I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight these things will I do unto them and not forsake them Right, he's going to do that. The, the ones who are going to come out of the darkness and receive the light are the elect, okay? Verse 17. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed and trust in graven images that say to the molten images, ye are our gods or our powers. So, A, the two-thirds, you're, you're still going to be doing your wickedness on the day of wrath. And your your uh, your false idols, your false gods, they're not going to be able to save you in that day. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as Yahweh's servant? Right, and for a time, you know, before Yahweh Shai came, you know, the Israel was blind. Israel didn't have the full understanding. Yes, the remnant was always in existence, but like I've told you in the past, even the prophets of old were going off because Yahweh had hid his face. Uh, Yahweh Shai was our uh, 
our, our mediator, our intercessor. Uh, he had to make intercession for the elect. Verse 20, seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but heareth not. Right, so these, these two-thirds, they'll see the prophets on the street. But they're, they're not going to pay no mind to, to us. They'll walk right by. You know, they're going to hear us out in the streets blowing the trumpet, but they're going to ignore the trumpet. And because any time in history when, 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 uh, when uh, <clears throat> kingdoms would go to war and they're blowing the trumpet, the literal trumpet, and people who ever ignored those trumpet, the trumpets being blown, they were, they were destroyed. But the ones who, hey, hearkened, listened to the trumpet, they, you know, they took heed and they're like, oh shit, we better got our shit together. That trumpet is blown. You know, let's see where I'm at. Where I'm at, verse 21. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness' sake, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. Right? So, Yahweh, he's and he uses his prophets to magnify his law right now because we're telling you the laws, we're telling you, you know, we're teaching the the nation of Israel, the transgressions, their transgressions. Because, you know, we had to learn the law ourselves through the Spirit, right? We're telling you about the dietary laws. We're telling about the, the laws to keeping the holy, high holy days, you know? We're telling you the laws that are, you know, like keeping the beard if you're a man. You know, wearing the fringes if we're out there teaching, wearing our garments. Those are all different laws that, you know, we, we're supposed to, we were supposed to always have these. But like I said, we had came back and, and learned and said, we're now we're singing that new song again to our people. And, you know, Yahweh's laws are being magnified in the process by his servants. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Right. So, yeah, our people were, were destroyed, devoured, robbed, spoiled. But the elect has, re, uh, you know, has repented, coming back in the fold, calling on the true names, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and this is what's taken us out spiritually out of the prison. Right? Like it says in, uh, what is it, Revelation 18, 11 maybe? Let me see. Revelation 18, 11. No, that's not it. It's locking. Let me, I don't know exactly. Look it up. So, the elect, oh, 18, 4. <laughs> It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Talking about Babylon, America is the her. So America is going to have, you know, we don't want to partake in the sins that Babylon, America, um, you know, allows. And then we don't want to be part of the plagues that Yahweh Bashem Yahshua put on this place. That's why it says, Come out of her, my people. Right? So it's a spiritual, uh, you know, we come out of Babylon, America first spiritually, but then it's going to be when Yahweh Shai and the angels come back to deliver us, it's going to be a physical um, return, right? We're going to get delivered. We're going to get salvation. Salvation. Isaiah 42, and, and we won't be spoiled anymore. We won't be robbed or in traps or in hidden house, prison houses. We're going to get delivered. 42, Isaiah 42 and 23. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? And we know the answer to that. That's going to be the elect, the Lord's prophets. Starting out with the Lord's prophets. Verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not Yahweh? He against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. And that's, like I said, our people, they, they, they forsake Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh has given us to our enemies. 
all right? We've been a spoil and we've been robbed by our enemies and spoiled by our enemies. You know, they've taken all our goods. You know, they have, they have even our land, right? Both, both uh, our land in the, in the Holy Land and also even the Americas. Did they not spoil us? Did they spoil the so-called uh, Native Americans, the Gadites and the, and the Reubenites? They, uh, you know, they, they spoiled this land. They've robbed it from our people. And who, who, who sent them to do that? Who sent the wicked and the heathen, you know, and the heathen nations to do that? It was Yahweh sent them as punishment unto us. All right? And why? Because our people are hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious house. And um, we, you know, we were never, in our even when we were, you know, so-called uh, keeping, we, before the enemies devoured us, we were fucking up. We weren't keeping the laws. That's why Yahweh punished us and sent our enemies against us. And he allowed the enemy to spoil and, and rob us. All right? Verse 25. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and hath had set him on fire round about. Ye knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Right, so Yahweh was pissed. He made he 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 was it, it made him furious to see us going off. When our people, when our forefathers were going off, it made him furious. That's why we've had so many um you know, captivities, because it's like, Yahweh, that's how mad he was. He was like, man, I'm going to fuck you, you Israelites up. I'm going to use these heathen nations to fuck you up. And, and you know, now we're coming into the time where he's going to redeem his people. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that. I hope my lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekak Wadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Inshallah, to the elect.